Snap Judgment Studios. Get a behind-the-scenes look at Comedy Central's The Daily Show on Beyond the Scenes, an original podcast from The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Every week, host Roy Wood Jr. goes deeper with notable guests and experts from the Emmy Award-winning series, and together, they use comedy to tackle current topics, from gentrification to gun laws, and take a closer look at how and why these topics matter. Listen to Beyond the Scenes from The Daily Show with Trevor Noah on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes every Tuesday. Attention shoppers, we now have Taste in the Bread Aisle, Dave's Killer Bread. That's right, an organic bread that's no longer a sedative for your taste buds. Dave's Killer Bread is on a mission to make the most of the loaf, to rid the world of GMOs, high fructose corn syrup, and artificial ingredients, and plant the seeds of good in all that they bake. Killer taste, killer texture, always organic. Dave's Killer Bread. Bread Amplified. From Luminary Media, you've crossed over to Spooked. This is just one of the episodes of our new season. All the newest episodes of Spooked are only available on Luminary. You can hear two episodes each week on Mondays and Thursdays through Halloween. Just go to luminarypodcast.com or download the Luminary mobile app. See, if I'm on the street and someone slights me, knocks my papers to the ground, calls me names, even raises their hand to me, like what happened the other day, the truth is I'm likely to let it go. To slowly pick my things up off the ground, to say the calming word, even, even to turn the other cheek. Everybody just calm down. Everything's going to be all right. Understand, I'm a lover. Not a fighter, but... But... If I'm walking with one of my babies, my good children, my happy kids, my nappy-headed monsters, if I'm walking down the street with one of my babies and someone steps to one of them, says something untoward, or God forbid raise their hand in my child's direction and I see it, retribution will be immediate. Unkind, out of all proportion, there will in fact be held to pay just like any other parent. Any other parent. And if the threat to them is not the crazy down the street or the entitled imbecile with a thousand dollar briefcase, but if this threat If this threat comes from beyond the veil, then the pain and the retribution, well, that's going beyond the veil too. From WNYC Studios and Snap Judgment's underground lair, my name is Glenn Washington. If you think that being a spirit gives you a place to escape, think again. Spook starts. first storyteller. His mother, she took her job, her job of taking care of him. She took it very seriously. Spooked. I was actually sitting on the doorstep. It was summertime outside eating a popsicle and this strange looking woman came up to the front of the house and I was a little bit terrified of her. She was our next-door neighbor. She came over to the house to introduce herself. 
It was the middle of summer, and she was dressed in an old wool overcoat and had a scarf on and a hat, and she was a little bit creepy to a four-year-old. I immediately just ran inside, got my mom, and my mom came to the door, and I sort of hid behind my mom while my mother was talking to her. At some point in the conversation, she sort of dropped in hints of what had happened in the house. There had been some trouble, and that the lady who had been in the house had died and had been through quite a lot of trauma. The neighbor told us her name was Lucinda Hagstrom. Once she had started to describe Mrs. Hagstrom, my mother remembered finding a photo uh, in one of the upstairs bedrooms. She had me run up and grab that photo and bring it down. It turned out that the photo was actually Mrs. Hagstrom. Photo of a young woman, probably on her wedding day. She kind of had an unhappy look to her. Well, at that point, it was more of a curiosity. My mother, she was just curious. She's like, she knew she had lived in this house, and she wondered what her dreams were for the house. One of the first incidents that happened was actually to me. It was a hot summer evening. I was home alone with my mother. I had gone upstairs to change into my pajamas. I was walking down the stairway. I'm about halfway down when I can feel what feels like a bony hand touch my back. There was a terrible smell on the stairway at the time that it happened. My heart started beating and about halfway down, I, before I could grab the railing, it gave me a firm shove and pushed me down the stairs. Uh, I looked back at the empty stairs, and then I ran into the kitchen where my mother was doing the dinner dishes. I was sobbing. I tried to tell her what had happened. She would have no reason to believe at this point that I was literally pushed down the stairs. She looked at me carefully, making sure I was okay, looking over me like a mother would, and then gave me a hug. She's like, oh, it was just an accident. I think you're okay. A couple months later, I was also walking down the stairs. I could feel somebody behind me. Um, I could sense that there was somebody behind me, and then the cold, bony hand in my back. But this time it wasn't just a gentle shove. This time it was a full-on forceful push. And this time I went down the stairs pretty hard, hitting the bottom. My parents heard me hit the floor. They came running. I insisted that I felt a bony hand. There was something breathing on me before it happened. It was smelly and scary. My parents kind of looked at each other. They probably had no idea was, you know, what was actually happening. But just a few months after we moved in, pretty much everybody had sensed something or heard something or seen something at that point. There's four siblings. They would hear voices. They'd have their hair pulled. They'd hear growling footsteps. Saw the face of Mrs. Hagstrom in his bedroom window. Would often have doors slammed. We had two giant light fixtures, and they started just to sway back and forth. Somebody tapping on the window. Lisa, she fell at different times, things crawling onto her bed. Our parents got us together one Monday evening, and thought that they should kind of talk to us about what was going on in the house. Uh, My parents' viewpoint at that point was, yes, there are spirits living in this house, but as long as you don't bother them, they are not going to bother you. After that meeting, we kneeled down and, as a family, prayed with a prayer led by my father. Him and my mother together instructed us, do not interact and they will leave you alone. Which didn't sit very well with me because I obviously wasn't bothering them, but, you know, I had been pushed down the stairs twice at this point. 
obviously for me, even at a young age, I was like, uh, I don't think so. I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> the first major experience in the house that my mother had was pretty shocking. It was a fall afternoon, and she was in the kitchen processing apples. And she heard what she thought was a kitten in the basement meowing. She decided to go down into the basement. She, as she was walking down the stairs, the air just started feeling colder and colder and heavier and heavier. She really just wanted to leave the basement of the house at that time, wanted to escape whatever was happening. As she went down the stairs, the sound sort of changed into a baby crying. It was that sound of the baby that stopped her.